Are you there, Marissa? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh boy, oh boy. So we're recording now. Can we start? Um, it starts, it's 49 seconds. It's going to start. Okay. All right. How are you? Good. How are you? Terrific. Thank you. I like those sunflowers. Are they real? Yes. Aren't they wow. marvelous? Yeah, they're really nice. Let me get them even more in the picture. They look really good there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to even talk about them. <laughs> sure all my stuff is showing. Okay. Yeah, everything looks good. Good. 13 seconds is coming on. Okay. Going I'm live ready. in nine. I'm ready when you are. In four, three, two, one, and live. Hi, everyone. I'm so glad you're here. I'm Nan Simonson with Lifestyle Medical, and welcome to another cooking class. Today, we're going to have one of my, our, my husband and my favorite dishes. Easy to do. If you go to the vegetable market, as we do, every week, and pile up with everything that looks great, Sometimes you look at your refrigerator and think, how am I going to eat all of this? Well, I have a rule. Nothing ever gets thrown away. And so if I've got a lot and I'm not sure what to do with it, I'll make this dish. I'll buy things for this dish. One way or another, almost every week, we make this dish. Our coconut, I call it coconut Thai curry. I think I've called it for you. Um, Nan's favorite spicy coconut vegetable stir fry. And you can make it with whatever, you, with whatever you want. You will see how I throw it together. So tonight, we're going to have my favorite coconut curry stool. Curry, Thai curry, coconut stir fry. And when you hear fry anywhere around me, it has nothing to do with oil. There's no oil that goes in this. Doesn't mean there's no fat. It just means there's no oil. And we're going to also have on the side some tofu. It's a great idea to have tofu around during the week to give you your protein, to give you your um, carbohydrate, because what is tofu? It's a bean curd. What are the beans? Soybeans. Are they good for you? Oh, they're amazingly good for you, loaded with protein. We can look at more of that later on. And then we're going to have some rice to go along with this. And then we're going to have some birthday cake. I'm calling it birthday cake because this last Saturday, I had, oh, 45 people on. And by now it's been viewed by almost 400 people. I did a virtual Facebook Live birthday book launch party. I turned 70, my birth or my book had just come out December 27th, and I was celebrating both of them with Anyone that wanted to come on, we had a, a uh, venue chosen to do the celebration months ago, but you can guess why we weren't doing it. And virtual turned out to be a lot of fun. So this is my book, Aging Powerfully. In lifestyle medicine, we believe that you can live into your 80s and 90s and beyond healthfully if you adopt lifestyle pillars that will keep you healthy. And my book reviews those pillars, adds a few more lifestyle modifications that can make a huge difference. For example, like fasting. How many of you fasted this last week? I spoke to one of our patients, I won't use names because I don't think that's the right thing to do here, but she's in her 80s. And she fasted for, I believe, this was her third or fourth time. What does it do for you? It sort of resets a lot of things in your body and gets rid of a bunch of junk because your body thinks you're going down for the third time and lightens itself up and then rebuilds itself. It's a good thing to do. If you haven't fasted before, you may want to talk to your doctor about it. So I talk about things like that in the book as well. But I want to read you something. When Marissa, hi, Marissa. Marissa is our office manager with Lifestyle Medical. She's behind the scenes here. 
when she came on, she said, wow, I like your sunflowers. Are they real? I said, yes, they were from my birthday party. What's the significance of sunflowers? I consider them my soul flower. We have spirit animals and spirit flowers. I'll call this my soul flower. And one of the best descriptions of what they represent, I wrote in my book. And it was a quote from Helen Mirren, damn Helen Mirren. She has been, um, I guess it's not called knighted, and I don't think it's called damned, um, but she is Dan Helen Mirren. She's an actress here. She's British. And she wrote this about sunflowers, and it pretty well sums up the way I feel about them. I don't think there's anything on this planet that's mo that more triumphs life than the sunflower. For me, that's because of the reason behind its name not because it looks like the sun, but because it follows the sun. During the course of the day, the head tracks the journey of the sun across the sky, a satellite dish for sunshine. Wherever light is, no matter how weak, these flowers will find it. That's such an admirable thing, such a lesson in life. Right now, with the COVID, the coronavirus and things getting a little bit wonky in our country, I think we need to look for the sun, look for it anywhere and track it throughout our days. When you start getting, I'll say, confused and overwhelmed, instead, look within, find gratitude, find the beauty, find the sunshine, and it can turn your day around. In other words, we fix first what we can fix, and we can fix internally how we view things. So with that, let's get cooking. Love these. I hope you appreciate them in your view as well. So what I'm going to start with is the tofu. Tofu is, again, fermented um, uh, soy curd. And this is a great brand. It's organic tofu. I always do soy products, organic. Now, if you're seeing some steam come out over here, that's because our rice cooker has some beautiful basmati rice in it because that's going to go with our meal. I could have used Asian noodles. I could have used brown rice, white rice, jasmine, basmati, black rice, the, the um, what do they call it, empire rice. But I just used an organic basmati rice. Um, and I'll talk a little more about that, too, because some of you are thinking, but Nan, what about the arsenic? I'll address that. If I don't, somebody raise your hand and chat it, and Marissa will keep me up on the chats. So this one is from House Foods. It's organic tofu. It's an entire pound. And tofu, again, is loaded with protein relatively low calories loaded with protein. I left it in this container because I wanted to show you something. You want to drain tofu before you use it and you want to push out some of the water. Some of it called, some people call that pressing the tofu. You can even buy tofu presses online where you put the tofu on, a plate goes on and you screw down the plate or weight the plate in some way, a, a square um, ceramic plate or wooden plate and it, it compresses it somewhat. Well, I like doing this. I take a knife at, on this sealed container, run it along the sides, and then put it upside down on my sink and just sort of press it and then leave it up against the side of the sink, still in its container, but then it's dry. Then I can cut it away and I have my tofu. I like this brand also because if you happen to shop at Costco, you'll find this brand in, in a lot of stores, and I believe almost all stores. But if you happen to shop at Costco, I believe it's less than six dollars for six packs. That's a deal. That's about half the price of what you'll buy in most stores. And this is certified non uh, GMO, gluten free, as well as organic and US um, DA certified organic. In order to cook it, if you got your recipe, the recipes went out late, uh, later than usual, and I'm sorry about that. For now on, they're going to be coming out on Sunday night. The menu and 
the recipes and photos will come out on Sunday night. Um, they were just delayed this week. So you got them this afternoon and some of you don't even know that yet because you may have just gotten home from work and not checked your email, but that's where they are. And the um, tofu recipe that I printed gives you, well, it doesn't even tell you, it gives you options, but I'm gonna show you an option because the recipe calls for doing what I'm about to do now. And this is what I do. This is how I cube it. I cut it down it um, through the middle. So I have, oh, they're not quite an inch, but approximately one inch um, deep cubes. And then I cut it in half and each half in half. And then I cut the other side in thirds. And I pretty well end up with these neat little cubes. Now my hands have been washed. I did that just before we began. And now I'm going to put it in a bowl. I don't use a tiny bowl, I use a medium bowl because if it's a tiny bowl, when I turn it or stir it, I'm gonna break up the tofu and I don't want to. This is extra firm tofu, but it can still break up. And then if you look at your recipe, it called for um, onion granules and garlic granules. You can use onion powder, you can use onion salt, garlic salt. I just like something with a little bit more, um, well, I like the granules and you can find granules, powder or salt. The salt stay away from, we get enough sodium and adding it in as you spice it, I don't think you need to do. Speaking of sodium, I'm using tamari here and the tamari, you can purchase organic tamari is fermented soy. Again, fermenting means that you're getting some probiotic. Soy means that you're getting some um, phytoestrogens that actually have been shown, unlike what a lot of people believed, have been shown to be um, protective against the cancers that are responsive to high estrogen levels. And like it or not, we get estrogen from lots of things, including animals that are fed um, that are fed chemicals to boost their growth. In in we get them from milk. We get them from cheeses. A lot of us don't eat any of that. I don't. I have been vegan for um, well it's over two years now, as is my husband, and so we don't eat any animal products at all. But if you do, you're getting estrogens from a lot of those and our body is overstimulated by them and is quite frankly damaged by the estrogens and there are cancers that grow because of estrogens. And so the soy actually binds to the estrogen receptors and keeps, it's a phytochemical. It's a much weaker source that doesn't have the same biological um, uh, effect as the, um, the estrogens that have a, um, a different source um, and certainly not an, and certainly an animal source. So what I'm doing is, so we recommend, um, we recommend soy. As a matter of fact, I was just listening to Christine Funk. You can Google her. She's the breast surgeon who worked with Angelina Jolie and um, uh, Crowell, the, the singer. What's her first name? Shoot. Um, anyway, she's very well known. And she says, eat your soy and eat it every day. Um, she's an advocate of it, and yet she deals with breast cancer. She is that, um, uh, she is that not only convinced, but she knows so well that those generate those um, communities that eat the most soy are the ones with the lowest amounts of breast cancer and a number of other cancers, including testicular. Okay, so I've tossed this in here just for flavor, and I'm gonna leave it here for a couple of minutes to, um, to absorb the flavor because soy absorbs the flavor, tofu absorbs the flavor of the things that you put on it. And I'm gonna bring it over to the stove. I'll be right back. Add some heat to what I'm doing. And then, if you don't have your recipe and you're wondering what went in there, I have some soy or some onion and garlic granules. I have some tamari. 
I showed you the tamari, and it's basically soy sauce, um, but a fermented one, um, one that I prefer to use. You can get the low sodium, but I get organic, gluten-free, because what did I say? Um, soy is so heavily um, genetically modified, which means then it can be sprayed um, with desiccants just before they harvest it, and those desiccants happen to be Roundup. And um, I added a teaspoon of either maple syrup or date paste. And I'm going to be using date paste in just a bit, but let me explain it to you. Get a pound of dates, um, a cup of dates, and you can Google the date paste and you'll see several um, different amounts of water to date. But what I do is I put hot water. Um, if I have a cup of dates, I'll put two cups of hot water. I'll drain off after several hours, whatever is left, just drain it off of the dates, and then I'll add back, for example, on two cups of dates, I'll add one cup of water. Then I'll put it in the blender, and if it's too thick, I'll add a little bit more water. That water that you drain off, by the way, is rather sweet. You could almost use it as a thinned, um, like a, a thinned pancake syrup. Okay, but this is the consistency of date paste I like, and I make a lot of it, so I put some in the freezer, and I just have out what I think I'll use in a week or two, so it doesn't go bad. But instead of maple syrup, which is refined to a degree, certainly a lot less refined than white sugar, dates and date paste is a whole food, because it's dates that are... Um, still attached to their fiber and their nutrients and the the um, sugar is um, modified by the um, if the fact that it's a whole food just ground down so what are we going to do next we're letting that sit for a couple of minutes and i'm getting ready a sauce that is going to go over the vegetables that are um, that we're going to be stir frying and in this sauce and this is the secret of this whole dish you can you can change anything else in the dish but you want to leave this the same unless what you want to do is to simply kick it up a notch and by that i mean add more heat to it add some additional flavor i have um added to this something that I suggested you could add in the recipe, and I'll explain what I mean by that. But this is what we're looking at. I began with uh, coconut milk. I always use the reduced fat. I don't want that much uh, full fat uh, coconut milk. When you buy the canned coconut milk, if it's a cool day, you'll see you'll get a hard plug of fat on the top. If you get full fat, the fat is just a really thick plug. I'll take a little less, thank you. And so I use the reduced fat. Be careful when you open it. And don't just take a spoon and hit the hard plug or it'll squirt right out. So you do that looking down at your, or with it um, going down to the, the bowl. So I have coconut milk. I have in there almond butter. It could have been peanut, you know what? Darn, I meant to make it peanut butter and I think I used almond butter. I like the peanut butter better in this dish, but almond butter is great too, so we're fine with that. I added some lemon, and again, you, you have the recipe available to you, so I won't get very specific. A couple of squirts of sriracha sauce, so we've got some heat coming in that way. A little bit of date paste to add that, that soft sweetness at the end. Tamari to give it an Asian flavor. And then I keep this on hand. It's Thai kitchen green curry paste. It has mangalang, which is that woody thing that you get at Thai restaurants in soup that gives it this very interesting, unusual flavor. Lemongrass is in here. Um, some chili peppers, lime peel, shallot. It's a actually rather whole food because there's nothing else in that but what I've told you. The chilies, garlic, lemon, um, grass, spices, salt, and very little salt, um, shallots and lime peel. And it gives it just a little bit more of an authentic Asian flavor. So I'm going to mix this together. I let the almond butter stay out a while so that it would be 
um, so that it would be soft enough to uh, to blend easily if it comes right out of the refrigerator. It stays pretty much as a clump. And I added, I have a grater, and, and I don't even bother peeling it. I always wash. I buy organic ginger. Always wash it, keep it in the refrigerator, slice slices of it to put in my smoothie. Well, I don't even bother if it's got the thin skin that this one does, and it does. I just grated the one to two teaspoons that I wanted in here, again, to get that marvelous Asian flavor. And I'm going to, well, I'll leave this here for now because I'm going to show you the vegetables. No, I'm going to bring you over because I want to get the tofu started. So... Here are my pans. I have this marvelous cast iron wok that I love. And I have this non-stick pan. This one happens to be a brand from Denmark called the Scan Pan that I trust. You want to look for non-stick cookware. It's the titanium non-stick or titanium ceramic non-stick. I'm trying to get this handle out of your way because it is a safer, much, much safer than Teflon ever was. Teflon was entirely too um, reactive to heat. And as a matter of fact, it was known that your Teflon, if it got hot, would emit a gas that if you had a house, uh, um, a household pet bird, it could kill the birds because of the gases that emitted. So even though there's moisture in here, I'm going to put this in, flatten it out, and now what's going to happen, and this is on a relatively low heat. This was medium, hot, now it's on a lower heat. I'm going to let this, doesn't quite crisp up, but what it does is it browns. You'll see me turning it so that each side gets sort of a, a brown, uh, um, kind of a crust, but not really a crust, okay? So we're going to let that do its thing. And what happens with the sauce is that the sauce becomes somewhat caramelized. It's a really nice flavor to add to our stir fry later on. And I'm going to bring you back so that we can talk about the vegetables now. Okay. Does anyone have any questions or comments so far? Marissa's uh, monitoring the chat. I'm too far away from it to be able to see it. So, the vegetables. I've already begun doing some chopping. And I'm going to do some more for you. Now, I'm conscious of your time. And quite often when we have a cooking class, I'll do a number of things in advance. Uh, as a matter of fact, you can see that I do that to a degree, and some of you know what that word is. Do you remember? Mise en place. Mise en place means before you start a menu, or it, it means um, uh, in its place, or, or uh, yeah, in its place. Um, chefs, cooks, will have everything ready before they begin to cook. Everything is laid out. Everything is available. Everything is ready. Things are already in little containers that can be dumped in so that you're not taking a lot of time in the prep work. You can just get to the actual cooking. So I will do that to a degree, and I did with the sauce. We were able to just throw things together. But I wanted to show you some things about these vegetables. So I had some beautiful cauliflower that I got at the Corona Farms Market. If you're in Riverside, you have... A, it never closed, never during the pandemic, because it, it's not a farmer's market. It's a huge tent in the field where all these things are grown and picked every morning. And they don't use chemicals. So it's not organic. It's expensive to be certified organic. But it is, um, everybody trusts that it is chemical free. And we've been told it is. And um, they have a reputation for that. So I'm going to show you what I've already put in. I have some carrot and some um, zucchini, but let me just show you how I did the zucchini. If I have a fat zucchini, I'll cut it down the middle 
and then I'll cut it into chunks. In this case, they're rather small. So I'm simply leaving them whole. And zucchini are so inexpensive. I get these from Trader Joe's. I like a quantity of zucchini. Uh, it tastes, they absorb the flavor. They're marvelously tender. And um, you know what I meant to do? Shoot. And I think I'm still going to do it. What I meant to do, I'll put them in here, is not mix the carrot in. And I'll tell you why. And this is this is a lesson for this, this particular dish. You're going to segment somewhat what you put in and when. And why don't I get this part started, and then I'll keep talking as I let some of our food begin to cook. I learned something. Oh. I'm glad you're here because you're going to learn something too. Now, I've been doing cooking classes at Lifestyle Medical for two years, but I owned a Tupperware franchise for almost 30 years, and for 28 years total, I worked with Tupperware as either the owner of the company or as a manager teaching people or holding demonstrations. And so I, I've had years and years of doing of cooking, and I'm very comfortable with it and love it. I never knew this. I always cut a, 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 um, have a, a whole onion, cut off the top and the bottom, and then work at peeling it. Well, I just saw a cooking demonstration, somebody that Chef AJ was interviewing, and she cut the onion in half, you know, took the skin that falls off, off, cut the onion in half, and then look at how easily it peels when it's in half. Because this doesn't have the crispy skin, that is bitter if I try to add that to my broth bag. Because that's gone, this is not the bitter part. I'm saving that for my broth bag. See, I don't have crispy skin on here. And look at how easy this is. Just comes right off. When I saw that, well, I didn't know what I was seeing until I tried it and I thought, hallelujah. And I don't know how many of you are new today, so I'm gonna walk away for something for a minute and get what some of you are going to think, oh, here she goes again, Nan's bag. <laughs> this is in the freezer, in a convenient area of the freezer, because nothing gets thrown away. You're going to see today mushrooms, and the mushrooms have a stem that's as tough as wood. Did I throw the stems away? Never. They're in this bag. Did I throw the carrot peels away? No way. The ends of the zucchini, heck not. Heck no. <laughs> Every week when I go to the farm store, I buy cilantro. Love cilantro. Some people can't stand it. We, all, we have a, a genetic preference. Isn't that weird that we actually taste it differently? For some people, it tastes like soap. Uh, but I love this stuff. And so last week's cilantro which isn't rotten and it's not browned and, and um, goopy. It's just older. Last week's cilantro goes in this, uh, parsley stems, everything. And then when this is filled, you're going to see what I make with it. I have a broth and that broth is going to be used tonight. Uh, again, nothing gets thrown away. Well, part of what, oh, well, I have this. Let me just do this quickly before I put it back in the freezer. The bell pepper. Take the white membrane, take the seeds and the stem, and voila, they go in the bag, and they're part of what will be a wonderful vegetable broth. So I'm going to walk away for a second. All right. So let me get this onion going, because the whole point of my having stopped earlier was that carrot is really tough, much tougher, for example, than the zucchini. I had no business putting those two together because if I cook the zucchini as long as it takes the carrot to be tender enough, the zucchini is too soft. So let me finish with the carrot. How did I slice the carrot? I slice it on an angle just because it looks a little bit more decorative. And if you see what I'm doing with my fingers, I have them like a claw to protect my fingertips from the knife. 
And there we go. And then I'm going to add the onion to that because, and I do the onion as a chunk. I'm not trying to get thin cuts. I like I like the chunky bits because when I'm eating it and they're super tender with this wonderful sauce, they're not just a flavoring agent. They're part of the vegetable that I love sinking my teeth into. And if you're wondering, now an onion is called an allium, or at least it's from the allium family, as is garlic and leeks and chives and shallots. And they're actually highly nourishing. There's something called allianase that is part of the um, makeup of onions and shallots. And it's very, very good for us. Okay, so what's happening is we're getting some browning. Oh, let me show you this as soon as I turn them around. Can you see me? I think so, yes. All right. I'm going to add a little bit of my broth. What is this broth? I just told you. And in other words, this would have been thrown away. Now, I don't know if you can see what's happening, but this little bit of browning, because this is a nonstick pan, turned into a bit of a sort of like a, a caramel almost, except a savory one. And I've just loosened it up by putting moisture in it. And now I'm turning this around. You know what I do when nobody's looking? I do this real fast before it burns the jeepers out of me. See, it would burn you if you do it too slowly. But I can do that really fast sometimes and, and get away with it. Okay, so I'm gonna let this continue on low. So the recipe calls for doing what I did with it, marinating it for a little while in the way I described, and then putting it in an oven, 40 or 400 degrees for 20 minutes on parchment paper. Do that if you don't have a nonstick pan like this, because we, we're not going to use oil ever. Um, but I learned that I could do it with this, and I love it. I love the results. Now, this metal burner, can you see this? This is a what they call supercharged burner. What do they call it? Power boil burner. Woo! When I make my broth, I actually started in that. Well, one of the things I learned at Chinese restaurants is that they have these supercharger burners that they use to make our, um, let's see if I can get myself a little bit in there. There we go. Uh, that they use to make these very quick stir fry dishes. And so I do my stir frying this way. Okay. What I'm trying to do, I'm not going to have it very, very hard, hot, but what I'm trying to do here is get the onion. Normally, I would do just the onion for a little while and not add the carrot, but it's fine that I add the carrot. And the reason I say that is carrot doesn't weep a lot of moisture. It's not a very moist vegetable, but onion has a lot more moisture. And if I put it into a hot pan, it starts to weep. And the weeping then starts a sort of a caramelization if the temperature isn't too hot. And if I come around and add a little bit of the broth after it has a chance to do some weeping. So I'm going to leave it to weep. If I forget, talk to Marissa and say, tell Nan to go do something with that before it gets brown. But I think I'll be okay. All right. Bell pepper. The bell pepper adds so much color to this. When this dish is gone in, so always try to have bell pepper and not the green one because you've got so much green in here and the green one is nearly as sweet as the red. And when it comes to the little curly parts, you cut those off because that makes, and what I mean is just let them be their own thing right there because that has a nice little shape. Um, I'm going to add this to the zucchini. You know what? You're my witness. I'm going to do this. I have another one, and I get these, and I wash them and put them in. 
so that I can do this. I'm going to take another half. I'll leave this right here because it's a nice color for you to see. But I'm doing this because I really like the red bell pepper. And I would love to have you eat this, but quite frankly, you won't be. And I will be. <laughs> and this is the whole point of this dish. You do what you love. Now I'm going to add some broccoli because I had some broccoli that came out of the field that morning at the farm store. How often do you get that? I cut the stems and eat them sort of as their own little vegetable because they're quite different. And, and if I had another tougher vegetable that I was going to put in on its own, I would put the stems in possibly just a couple of, like a minute or two before I put in these more um, uh, tender pieces. Like the broccoli is more tender than the, the, the bottom. But I'm not going to do that because I don't have anything else to add like that. And you're going to see something else that is very delicate. And that you add at the very last second. I'm going to walk away from you and stir this. Oh, nice. You know what? I'm going to take you with me. And what I meant by nice is, can you see that little bit of brown? That brown gives me some flavor. Now, I want you to see what happens when I do this. Watch this. And you've seen, you've all seen me do this if you've watched me in class. I'm going to add a little bit of broth. Now, do you see that bubbling? And do you see that the bubbling is turning brown? That means that we've already started a caramelization process. And I'm getting the, the, if we were doing French cooking, you've heard me say this, we would call that deglazing the pan. Well, that's usually with meat juices. We don't use meat. But that means that you take things that are burnt on, or at least not burnt, but that are stuck to the pan and you're loosening them and caramelizing them. So we're going to leave that. I'm going to take you back again. Okay. There we go. So. I'm going to add this beautiful broccoli that had come out of the field that morning. They also had cauliflower. So I grabbed cauliflower out of the field that morning. Now, what else could you put in this? We could have asparagus. We could have green beans. Uh, we could have more carrot, less carrot. Um, gosh. We could have sliced parsnip, but maybe it'd be a little odd because these flavors have a tiny bit of sweetness to them. I don't know. That might be okay. Um, there we go. But these are the vegetables i found that I really like. But I'm missing a couple of things, and some of you might be thinking about that. This is a 12-cup bowl, and in the recipe, I say to you, you'll be using about 10 cups of vegetables. I cheat all the time because it's my food, my recipe. <laughs> and what it means is if I have, I won't say too much, if I have a lot of vegetables, it just means that there'll be less sauce to go around. That's all it means. But there's plenty of sauce because we're steaming it in the base of sauce. But if I have fewer vegetables, less volume, I should say, uh, it simply means that, again, there's going to be less sauce when we actually serve it. Now, I have more. Love this at Trader Joe's because they're pre-washed, they're organic, they're sugar snap peas, and the organic ones have that little string removed. If you buy them, for example, right off the bush, they have a, a, a stem end, and if you pull up at the stem, you pull off a string. Well, that takes a while. So I like that I don't have to do that. So I'm going to put a bunch of these because they're so flavorful. And then this is variation. You know what I'm going to do with the rest of these? I thin cut them and put them in my salads because they're fabulous. Walk. They're tender. And then bok choy. And this bok choy is also from Trader Joe's. Very well priced. Is it $250 or $299? But it's washed and ready to use. That's convenient. 
because otherwise you have to get into these things and do a real number on cleaning them. You see these bases? I could put them in my vegetable bag, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to cut them up. Now, here is where I'm going to diverge because, I'm sorry, oh, here. I knew I had a bowl for this. These are tender, these little ends. And if I throw them in with the broccoli and the cauliflower, I think they get too soft. And I want them to be somewhat crisp. So I'm going to put them there. And then, one last thing. These leaves are like teeny little babies. They will completely decompose if I cook them even as long as they're stems. So I'm going to slice them. Yum, yum. And they are going to go in at the very last second. And I have one more thing to show you. Now, this is pricey. I'm not saying this is a deal. They don't have them at Trader Joe's. Oh, you're going to have to follow me over while I cook. Because I'm going to get this thing started. Follow me. There we go. All right, beautiful. Okay, so what am I, oh, hold on. Probably shouldn't do this, it's probably hot. Eh, it's all right. Okay, what you're looking at here is, where are you? Oh, okay, what you're looking at here is a shiitake mushroom, a white shiitake mushroom. When sliced, look at how pretty that is. If I have a lot of white, oh, wait, 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 wait. Now somebody I know is saying, man, turn it. Oh, no, they weren't burning at all. Okay, because I put that little bit of broth. This is what you do instead of oil. Do you know that if I was a traditional cook, by now I would have added probably three or four or five tablespoons of oil that would be degrading by this heat. And... The dish, I could eat this whole dish for probably, and I don't count calories at all, but I could eat this whole dish because you've got to have something to kind of, um, as a measurement for, um, for a calorie density, meaning the, the, the fuel uh, ability of food. I could eat this entire dish for probably fewer calories than one sugary cupcake. You know those muffins that you buy that you think are 300 calories, 370? Well, if you look at the ingredients, it says two servings for one of those muffins. So the muffin's 700 calories. We could eat all of this for a fraction of that by eating the way that I'm showing.
Marissa, it says we were con disconnected. Is everybody there? You're on Are now. We still on? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and keep cooking because yeah, I, it, we lost you for a bit, but we're on now. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. Did you hear that? And I'm steaming this for about five minutes. No, we didn't. So, okay. <laughs> thank you. Everyone, I poured everything in. I used some of my broth to give it about that much water. The tofu is doing beautifully. It's just browning nicely on the bottom. It's on low. And while this is cooking, I wanted to describe these mushrooms. The mushrooms I get online, they're not inexpensive. They're this brand, but I just ordered some today that was another brand. They, I want organic mushrooms because the fertilizer that they use with mushrooms, they are grown in the ground, could be filled with animal um animal what am i trying to say well i'll just use the word poop uh as a fertilizer because that's what is done a lot of the time and i don't want that i also don't want a lot of chemicals or fungicides uh to be used on my mushrooms so i get the organic these are the white shiitake organic mushrooms and i got a pound for 28 dollars so i decided to try something today i measured the mushrooms that I put in here, I weighed them and it was 2.3 ounces. Then I weighed them after I soaked them and it was 6.8 ounces. Now that's not quite triple, but that means to me that, it, and, and you're probably listening to this saying, Nan, you've got your math wrong, but I don't think so. That means to me, it's not quite triple, maybe two and a half times, um, what, what I'm producing is a mushroom that is now two and a half times its dried weight, which means that if I buy a pound of these for $28, I'm getting close to three pounds of, and, and it might even be more, of mushrooms the way I would buy them from the store, which means that they're a little less than $10 a pound. Well, if you try to find shiitake mushrooms, fresh shiitake mushrooms and i actually like the dry better because you can get some really thick ones what you buy for example at the health stores or at trader joe's if they're fresh to shiitake they're really really thin um they're they're easily that amount so anyway buy them online soak them but what i do with the soaking liquid is i put it in my broth pot or i put it in my broth bowl i wouldn't drink it without cooking it because I don't, I don't know, I don't think that's a good idea. I think you could get some bacteria you don't want. The other thing that has to happen before you, because I soak them and then I slice them, is you take that stem off because a shiitake mushroom has a really, really thick stem. And we're not going to use that. So I'm going to walk away and cut it off. And it cuts off easily. You just get your finger out of the way. And then while I walked away, I cut this into three nice slices. And I want to check this out because I don't want it to overcook. Oh, yes, this is looking great. And you can feel it. See, this is cool enough for me to touch. But you, I can feel that things are starting to soften. And I'm going to add the mushrooms. You don't have to use mushrooms. You could use fresh mushrooms. You could use chunks of portobello mushroom. But I like the smokiness of a shiitake mushroom. They're earthy. They're smoky. They're, they have a really special flavor. All right. And I'm going to give it just a minute or two. And then I'm going to add some more of the vegetables. And so I'm going to take you over here and work fast because I'm going to take you to another activity. And that is that I want to show you 
what to do with a mango because we're going to do a chocolate cake tonight. We're going to do my birthday cake. For my party, virtual party, I made my own birthday cake, this fabulous chocolate cake that took one minute in the microwave or if you have a problem with using a microwave, you choose not to, even though Dr. Greger says that it's fine to use a microwave, but it doesn't damage the food, especially if you're reheating or cooking quickly. Um, some people don't want to, in which case you could um, bake for at 400 for 12 to 14 minutes. But let me show you what I would do with this mango. With this end, because there's a seed in the middle, and why am I doing mango? It goes really well. With Thai, I mean, they have the mango sweet rice in Thai restaurants for a reason, because it goes very well with the spicy food. And on this end, I could chop this and turn what I just did into chunks. See, now I have these little mango chunks. But I'm not going to serve it that way. I'm going to serve it. on a little plate and I'm just going to cut each half. I'm just going to do it with one half. Go along the skin and put it on the plate. And because I don't eat a lot of sweets, and why don't I eat a lot of sweets? Because the more I eat, the more I want. And I don't want a lot of sweets. I'm crazy about fruit and vegetables and beans and legumes. And I don't want to have to have sweet stuff to feel satisfied. Because then there's no end to it. We are ancestrally designed to want sweets and fats and things that kept us alive when food wasn't plentiful. And that means that because our manufacturers make things that they know we're going to not be able to stop eating. When you buy processed food or let's say fast foods, you're getting things that you can barely stop eating. Okay. So this would be an excellent dessert. What did I put on this? Love this. Trader Joe's Chili Lime Season Blend. It's really good for Mexican food but it's great for this as well. And I'll show you what we're going to end up with in just a little bit as it relates to our meal. But I've got to get back to our stir fry because I can tell it is ready to rock. All right. Back here. Take the cover off. All right. I'm going to add the stems of the bok choy. That was the green vegetable that you saw me working with. And now I'm going to put our sauce in it. Now the other thing I could do, if I have a lot of vegetables here and there's plenty of flavor, I can add more broth to give me more, um, to spoon over the rice, for example. Just a minute. Because in the end, I'm adding cornstarch to thicken it anyway. All right. I got this wok from an Asian um, market. You can almost always go into an Asian market and find in the back of the store woks. But you want a good, solid handle, rivet it in. You don't want this puppy spinning on you when you try to pick it up and get it anywhere. Can you see how absolutely gorgeous this is? I'm going to cover it for a couple of minutes. Then we're going to thicken it, and we're about to serve. But we're missing something. What are we missing, everyone? We're missing cake. Let's get to that. All right. So 
you're thinking, all right, tell me about this cake, man. Here we go. Cake in a cup. What are the ingredients? The title of this cake is Delicious Vegan Double Chocolate Microwave Cake in a Cup. It was inspired by Muriel Banknashi, and I put the link to her um, cooking page. I don't come up with recipes really well, but man, I can be inspired by something I like, change it five ways, and it becomes my own. But I'll still give credit to the person whom I'll say inspired me. And this begins, and you want to be specific with what you put in this. Don't be sloppy about your measuring because you only have this teeny little bit. For example, I have here, and I want you to see what it looks like. Where are you? There you go. Up, 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 up there. All of these powders. I'll, I'll call them powders. And they are... They are two tablespoons, don't write this down because you'll be able to get it, two tablespoons whole wheat flour. Well, I can't do whole wheat. I don't do gluten. And so I didn't want to use a non-gluten or a gluten-free flour because they are refined starches, tapioca starch, rice starch, arrowroot. There's nothing nourishing in that. I want whole food plant-based. So instead of the wheat flour, I ground up some oats and turned it into oat flour, but you can just buy oat flour. So it's oat flour, almond flour, cocoa powder, or cacao, which is unsweetened, lots of fiber, low calorie, and that's where you get your chocolate. And I'm mixing this really well, a quarter of a teaspoon of baking powder. So I'm going to mix this in this little pyrex cup before and i put it into this cup with its straight flat or straight sides and flat bottom because it's harder to um uh, to get it um mixed well i'll put it in here see even when i turned it out i saw some white powder which could have been anything it could have been my baking soda it could have been anything and boy we want that baking soda where it needs to be and that is all over and then I'm adding to it the wet ingredients, which include three tablespoons of milk. It could have been soy milk to add protein to it or almond milk. I used almond milk. I'm putting that over a tablespoon of, um, of almond butter. That's why I got the almond butter out. And all right, I have this darling little whisk that allows me to mix it well. And then I added to it, instead of maple syrup, I added date syrup, or excuse me, date paste. Actually, you know what? Did I add the date paste? No, I didn't. Oh, I'm so glad I remembered that. Since if I'm gonna eat this, I want it to be sweet enough. Where is my date paste? Oh, people, I lost my date paste. That's weird. Well, I'm not going to worry about it because I don't know where it is. Oh, there it is. Okay. A tablespoon of date paste. And again, we want this to be somewhat accurate because there. Because it is, um, we only have one teeny little cup to work with here with very few ingredients. So if it's not accurate, it's going to not work. All right. Mixing all of that, I added vanilla extract. And for the cocoa powder, you can get all of these at Trader Joe's. Almond, flour, cocoa powder, um, oat flour, which I ground. Vanilla extract. Mix these up. I'm going to take the cover off of my. There. Okay. I'm going to bring you around because I'm getting worried. I don't want this to overcook. And I'm going to add, whoops, man. I'm going to add the very last bit of greens. I 
sometimes I move too fast. Not lots of times I move too fast. And I'm going to add to that the cornstarch, which I've already mixed with water. It's about a, about a tablespoon. Oh, it's turned into a plaster of Paris. Mix it, mix it. Don't dump it in that way or you'll end up with a like a jelly candy. Okay. This is about as cooked as I want it to be. So I add it along the edges, stir it easily and fast. Put some things in there to get it there. You can see it right away starts to thicken. And this is just about done. If I cook it anymore, you know what'll happen? It'll start blanching. I've got to give it enough heat for enough time to thicken the cornstarch. I'm going to lower the heat a little bit. Oh, those mushrooms, people, look at this. Look how beautiful this mushroom is. Ow, ow, ow. Look at that. Look at that. They are chewy like a steak. I don't want a steak, so I shouldn't even use that analogy. But some of you have not transitioned fully or maybe choose not to to whole food plant-based exclusively. And you don't think you could live without that texture that you love. Well, you can get that kind of texture in mushrooms. And for a lot less than a steak. Okay, I'm gonna let that sauce thicken. And follow me over and let's get this cake in. Because after all, it's got all this cooking time. That's a joke, of course. It has one minute of cooking time. What I will do at the end, though, is add some chocolate chips. So boil, boil, boil. Oh, some of my almond butter is stuck to the inside of the um, whisk. Okay. I'm scooping this in. I'm going to mix it well. And this is another thing that you want to do diligently because, again, you've got this tiny little thing. And I want to be sure that I don't have a pocket in the bottom, on the sides, that is flour and no moisture, or moisture and no flour. So I'm looking in here, and I'm turning it, and I'm looking for dry spots. And as I do this, I'll come up with some. I don't want to overmix. I don't want it to turn into something that's tough but I don't want to undermix either. Now, I'm going to add a tablespoon of chocolate chips by putting some, I'm going to cheat and take a few more, putting some into the mix and then some right on top of the mix. And I'll show you what it looks like in a minute. Now, I have a plate here that has a gold rim. This cup does not. Why? Pop quiz, why? Well, when you were yelling at the, micro, or at the camera right now, because you don't put metal in a microwave oven, it causes arcing and arcing. It's a real good way to blow up your microwave or to blow up your cup. And I said that at my birthday party, and I said to myself and said to them out loud, I don't know if it would really blow up the cup. But you don't want to experiment with that and wreck a microwave. Do you see the beauty of this dish? We have oranges, and we have reds, and we have greens, and we have mushrooms. Okay. I'm going to... Put this in its rightful place. You'll see it in a minute. Turn this off. Okay. Now you can follow me over. All right. I'm going to pull our meal together. And in doing so, I'm going to have to cut off 
a bit of my head, but I think you can live with that. All right. So you'll just be seeing my arms. So what am I doing now? I am plating the um, tofu. All right. Now, in, there have been times where I would just pour this entire pan of tofu over the dish. However, it kind of gets lost in there, and some people might eat a whole bunch of tofu, and some might not get a lot. So now I serve it on the side and let people add three or four bits or five bits, because what did we end up with? Um, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, that's 12 times 24 pieces. And this meal will go, eight people could easily eat this. Tim and I eat it, and then we have it for an additional entire meal. Then I'm going to put on top of this, sliced green onion, and I'm going to put on top of it some, oh, it's making it lose its beautiful color though. Let's just stir things around a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to put some cilantro. If you don't like cilantro, obviously you won't do that. And then we're going to get out Oh, and then we're going to serve peanuts on the side because that crunch from the peanut adds a lot. So we'll do that in a second. But you're probably wondering about the peanut. Oh, oh, look. Look at this. That's <laughs> this is a chocolate chip that kind of got carried away. <laughs> Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, yes. All right. So this is our meal, everyone. We have, just a second, down, down, down. There we go. Down, down, down. There we go. All right. So we have jasmine rice, and I got organic Indian jasmine rice and I researched this and found that the rice with the least amount of arsenic there's a lot of arsenic in rice that was produced in the center of the United States where they had chickens and used the chicken feathers for fertilizer and they grew cotton and used arsenic to kill the bull weevils of the cotton that went into the ground and is still being absorbed by the rice. Um, and Google it. Google rice and arsenic and you'll see it's, it is a problem. Let me get a, a fork for that to loosen it. And I do recommend that when you start with your rice out of your rice cooker, then you start with a fork rather than a spoon just to loosen it up. Here. There we go. All right, so I am the Indian and the Thai organic basmati rice, even the white, has the lowest amount of arsenic of any of the rices, which is really interesting. And some of the brown organic rices have the most. So with all that being said, I don't go out of my way to eat rice all the time. I eat my oat groats. I like buckwheat. Because I don't do gluten, I can't do farro, but farro would be great. Wheat berries would be great. Okay, so here's the way we plate this. Actually, I shouldn't say we. Tim likes his rice on the side. I like my rice like this. And then we're going to serve this beautiful dish and all these mushrooms and the vegetables and the broccoli and the cauliflower and the carrots and sugar snap peas and zucchini. Look at that. 
oh, what a meal. And then you go in for the sauce, and you spread the sauce over it, yum, yum. And then you go in and you throw in some peanuts. And then you add some tofu. I'm going to say four or five pieces to start with, unless you're just starving, because that pretty well takes care of about, that pretty well takes care of about, gosh, 10, 12 grams of protein. And what do we have? We have mango for fruit. We have our whole food plant-based meal without one touch of anything processed. We have our white rice to soak up the juices. And we could have done that too. Add a little bit of the juice to the rice. We added peanuts for additional protein and crunch. And look at this. Look at this cake. Where are you? Oh, there you are. Look. Look at that. Absolutely fabulous. Moist, chocolatey, velvety. And what do we have? Almond flour, oat flour, cocoa, which is not a sweet food. It's actually a healthy food. Date paste, vanilla extract, some, um, and oh, my chocolate chips are vegan. So they're not made with milk. They're organic vegan chips, chocolate chips that you can get at Sprouts or I happen to get at the La Sierra Market. So that's our meal. Bon appetit. Do we have any questions? I'm going to get on the camera now as best I can. Let's see. And I'll answer any questions. I'll pull this back so you can see it from back here. Is there a substitute for the coconut milk? Oh, man. You can use, um, you can use any of the plant milks, but you're not going to, well, I'll tell you what, Dr. McDougall, who, whose book is very well known, The Starch Solution, doesn't like using the coconut milk um, because he doesn't want all that coconut fat in his food. And so he uses um, the coconut milk. Now, if, if it's flavor preference, that's very different. But he uses the coconut milk that you buy in the carton the way you do almond milk because that has 30 calories as opposed to because it's defatted. And then he adds a little bit of coconut extract. And you get that kind of flavor, and then you thicken it with the cornstarch or arrowroot or auger auger, and you have that same kind of um, uh, Asian flavor. Because in Thailand and in even the Indian foods, the curries, they use coconut milk all the time. Otherwise, you'd just use another plant milk. You would uh, any plant milk. Uh, it could be soy if you want to add a lot more protein, because if you don't want to use, if you don't have tofu, you might even want to use the soy milk because you've got nine grams of protein per cup that you use. And this is approximately, it's almost two cups of milk. Um, but you could do that. It won't taste the same, but you would know the difference. You'd still love it. Is it a preference or is it an allergy? I think it's upset stomach. It's a it upsets someone's stomach. Yeah, okay. All right. Then you'd want to use a different milk and season it with all of these same seasons seasonings. You won't have that part of the flavor flavor float flavor profile, but you're still going to have a great meal. Anything else? And where do you buy your rice? Oh, this was Trader Joe's. It was Trader Joe's organic basmati rice from India. They have a organic brown basmati and an organic white. And I got the white because I had just read that the white is actually even better um, for the arsenic level from India or Pakistan or, or, or Thailand um, if it was the basmati. So I just got that. But quite frankly, I don't eat enough rice to worry that much. Uh, uh, arsenic is accumulative. Your body will get rid of, because it's in a lot of things, it's, it's an element of the earth, it will get rid of a certain amount on a regular basis. If you overload it, 
if you have it all the time, that's where it starts giving you that accumulative effect that can affect us in a lot of um, a, a, a lot of our organs. And so you don't want to do that. And people are becoming rather concerned about the levels of arsenic with people that eat, uh, let's say, rice all the time. Um, but I said all of this because normally I would have brown rice. I like the idea that brown rice has the endosperm, which is where the protein is, has the husk, which is where the fiber is, and is has twice as much fiber as white rice does. Normally I never buy white rice, but anyway, that was that was why I bought it this time. And what size is your wok? Oh, um, I don't have a, hold on. I don't have a measuring tape, but this is eight by 11. And so I'm gonna say that it's a, if this is 11, 12, 13, it's about a 13 inch wok. 13 inch round and you can see how deep it is and did you see what I was able to do with it if I have a lot of greens let's say I go to the farm store and I have a whole bunch of beet greens I go there to buy beets the beets go in my smoothie but the greens as soon as we get them that night we'll usually have them saute uh, dry saute exactly the way you saw me do it an onion or a half of an onion if you don't want that much um, put in garlic at the very last minute. You don't want that to burn. Uh, put the stems of the beets, the beet greens. And so you cut the stems, you put those in until when you touch one, it's a little soft. Then you add the leaves, you mix it all up. Put the. I even use my wok cover because I have a big pan that I put this in and I just want them to steam. The beet greens are great within about four or five minutes of that last step, putting them in over the partially cooked stems absolutely fantastic well i if i have a mass of any of those greens like this last time i bought turnips they have these sweet little round turnips that big and the greens are still very tender so i did my beet greens and the and the turnip greens i needed something big so i use my wok for things like that all the time it's a very handy tool and it's little fat bottom kind of sits into one of my soup pans because i do you know big pots of things that I could then put in the freezer for my, what I call lending library. When we're hungry and I'm not making anything, I'll go out there and pick out from my library some frozen something. Um, usually they're soups, but sometimes they're even grains, like my oat groats, I have some of those out there. Any other question? How are we doing? It's cacao, something that you can buy at the store? Yes, yes actually. Well, didn't I bring it out? Yes. This is, it's, it's, I'm pronouncing it cacao because I was in Peru and, and um, Costa Rica and they have the plantations there and that's what they call it. But we call it cocoa, cocoa powder. And there is no sugar in it. There is even a gram of protein in one tablespoon. And this is three tablespoons. No, it's not. It's one tablespoon and two teaspoons which is really wonky, um, but you do that. One tablespoon, three teaspoons, because you don't want it to have too little, but you don't want it to have too much. And um, anyway, um, but yeah, this one was from Trader Joe's. The one I used this weekend in class, I got from a health food store and it was a fermented cacao. Uh, same thing, uh, great fiber, Great protein, no sugar, and um, it's it's your dark chocolate. Look at that. I have a cup of dark chocolate here. Now, I took the time to take these ingredients, calculate the calories, and add them up. And it was about 369 calories for this and 9 grams of protein. So if you want to have a little bit of a splurge and drink uh, eat this whole thing, <laughs> If you had a cup of soy milk and ate this, that would be 18 grams of protein. That would be your entire lunch allotment. I, I don't mean allotment, but you've got lunch there. 369 calories. That'll keep you full for, full for a while. I didn't figure the fiber, but I think it, it's probably four or five or six grams of fiber because of the oat flour, the almond flour, and the cocoa powder. Um, 
and the tablespoon of almond butter. That alone has, oh, I don't know, about three or four grams of, of fiber in it. So this can be your own definite little meal. I'm not going to eat. As a matter of fact, I made three of these when I first experimented because I wanted to see how it filled different cups. Well, this is about the right size cup. Otherwise, it's like this cavernous hole before you get down to your cake. And um, I found that I didn't want to eat the whole thing. I ate teeny little bits of it, and Tammy ate teeny little bits for about three or four days. Um, because, again, you fall in love with this. The next time you look at that gorgeous apple that you couldn't wait to eat all day long until you got home, you don't want the apple because all you can think about is chocolate cake. But, man, if you want a good chocolate cake, da-da. And one of the things I recommended at my virtual party was something that can make this even quicker to put together. When you have these things out, the almond flour, the cocoa powder, the baking soda, a little bit of salt, a pinch of salt, everything, not the liquids, but the the dries, it's what, four or five, well, one, two, three, four, five dry ingredients. Why not have little teeny jars or little teeny snack bags and do it like a manufacturing plant? You have the one you're going to make now or maybe two or three because while one is setting up, because after they cook, let them set up at least a minute or so. Um, you throw in another one, and if it's two of you, you have dessert for the night, but don't eat it all at once. I think that's just too much, but do whatever you want. I handed this after my party. I took one bite, handed it to my daughter, and she ate the whole thing. She, she kept saying, oh, my gosh, this is so good. Better her than me. Um, but so you have the almond flour. You put, um, what is it, a tablespoon, a tablespoon and five little baggies. The cocoa, five little baggies. The oat flour, five little baggies. When you're done, you have five little baggies ready to turn into a cake with just the addition of the milk, the nut butter, the and by milk, of course, I mean plant milk, the date paste or maple syrup, vanilla extract, and kind of keep some chocolate chips on hand. Anyway, was somebody going to say something? And by the way, this is a great snack. This tofu, to keep this in the refrigerator and throw it cold on a, on a salad or um, if you have any kind of a stir fry or if you're sauteing vegetables and you want to add a little bit of protein, it's because of the flavors mm, that we put in it, the tamari, a little bit of um, date paste. What else should I use? Oh. The oh, no. yeah. <laughs> am I am I making you crazy? Sorry. Anyway, can you do a, um? Can you give us a quick recap on how to make the date paste? Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Hold on a minute. I'm going to abandon you for just a second. Let me make sure. Let me see which one I use. Okay. Oh, that's your salsa. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Because I believe it was two cups of dates. It's either one or two cups of dates. And, oh, darn it. I got this one from Tammy of Nutmeg Notebook. Pour, put boiling water over it. Let it absorb everything it was going to. Let me see if I can find her. And if I can't, um, nope, that's your cheese. Nope, I can't find it. Anyway, I believe it was two cups of dates, um, covered it with boiling water, drained it, and then added one cup of water back to the dates and blended them in the um, Vitamix. Or not the Vitamix, yeah, my Vitamix. And if they were, it was any thicker than the way I had it, uh, in that jar, I added a little bit more of the um, of the the date water, and then I kept the date water, and I could use little bits of it in dishes. For example, instead of adding some date paste to the the sauce, I could have added just a little bit of that date water because it's that sweet. Now, AJ, uh, Chef AJ, I've seen her date paste. Hers is thicker. Hers is thicker and 
uh, it stands up more. I like it a little bit more um, loose. The way I the way I use it, I like it a little bit more you uh, loose, and that's why I am a little off on exactly um, what I did. I'm pretty sure that was it. But Tammy's not made notebook. She has a date paste. Chef AJ has a date paste, and you could actually Google that, and it'll probably even come up that way because they have a recipe file that is so well established now that you can actually ask for a specific recipe from either one of them and pretty well get it. Any other questions? You know what else is just fabulous is these mushrooms. As I said, I won't take a bite because I'll be chewing for a while and I've got it in my fingers. Put it right there and save it. Uh, but when you have these mushrooms in this dish and you have all these vegetables and you have the fabulous onions and then you hit a mushroom, it honestly like you're eating a a regular meat-based stew. Even though I don't want a meat-based stew, that that texture can really be satisfying. So, all right, everybody wants to thank you and wish you a happy birthday. And then let's ask if your book is on sale on Amazon. Yes, the book is on sale on Amazon for sale on Amazon. We were it was released December twenty seventh. It is a Amazon bestseller because its first week, it was the number one new release that first week. And my video is still up for my birthday. And I, it's kind of a training video. You're going to get some really good ideas. You're going to see the cake again, but you're going to get some great ideas. And that is on my Facebook page, Nan Simonson um, in Facebook, or Aging Powerfully with Nan, Facebook Aging Powerfully with Nan is my group. And uh, the video is still up and I think it's it's near 400 views now. So I'm real pleased and a number of you who are there tonight may have been on because there were a number of patients that we see um, at Lifestyle Medical who were on that day. Anything else? And thank you for being here. It means everything oh, to me. That'll That'll be it, Nan. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. And thank you, Marissa. I think I'm going to come and hit my button.